This video is um, in a series of videos where we are trying to prove the fundamental theorem of finite abelian groups. So we decided to divide the proof following Galien's book. We decided to divide the proof into four lemmas. The first lemma that we proved in a previous video is let G be a finite abelian group of order m times n, where m and n are relatively prime. If H is the set x in G such that x to the power of m equals identity and k equals the set where x is in G and x to the power of n equals the identity, so this m will be this one and this n will be this one, then G is equal to the product of H times K. Next we saw a second lemma that we proved in the previous video that says next we saw a second lemma that says let G be an abelian group of prime power order um, and let A be an element of maximal order in G. Then G can be written in the form product of K uh, times the set generated by A, where K is still this set. Okay? So, in this video, we are going to use these two lemmas. The lemma that says let G be a finite abelian group of order MN. H is this uh, subgroup. Then we check that this is a subgroup and K is this subgroup. So, I can write G as a product of H and K. And I can also write G in the form of a product of uh, the set generated by A times K, where K is this K. So, uh, if we pick this lemma 2, okay, that says that we can write G in this form, if we pick this lemma 2, and using induction, it's easy to get to lemma 3. So, a finite abelian group of prime power order is a direct product of cyclic groups. Okay, you just use this, okay, and uh, it's really easy. Okay, it's a matter of using induction here. So I'm going to write lemma 3. So as I said, lemma 3 is just a matter of using lemma 2 and induction. A finite abelian group of prime power order is a direct product of cyclic groups. So, so far, looking at lemma 1, uh, since G can be written as subgroups of this sort, where M and N, do not forget, uh, they are relatively prime. Okay, so since this is true, we can write G as, so we can write G as a product of G of P1, G of times G of P2, times etc. till times G of Pn, okay, where G of Pi is nothing else but a group of prime power orders. They will all be prime power orders, okay? We know that using lemma 1 and now using lemma and also using lemma 3 that says that the finite abelian group of prime power order is a direct product of cyclic groups. Now using this we, we, we know that each G pi is a group of prime power order okay and lemma 3 shows that each of these factors is a direct product of cyclic 
groups. So, uh, we proved that G is a direct product of cyclic groups of prime power order. Okay, okay so what do we still have to do? Well, we have the only thing we have to prove now is that these factors are unique. So we have to prove the uniqueness of the factors. Okay. So we must prove that there is only one way, well, of course, up to isomorphi isomorphism and up to rearrangement of factors. Okay, so you can change factors and change to another group isomorphic to well, any of these. Okay, to write this G of Pi as a direct product of cyclic groups. Okay, so that leads us directly to uh, lemma 4. So lemma 4 says, this is lemma 4, suppose G is a finite abelian group of prime power order. If J equals the direct product of H1 times H2, etc. times Hm, and J is also the direct product of K1 times K2 times etc. times Kn, <clears throat> where all these H's and all these K's are non-trivial cyclic subgroups with some sort of a chain where H1 subgroup H2, Hm and K1, K2, Kn. If this happens, then M is equal to N and the order of Hi is equal to the order of Ki. Okay, and I'm going to leave the proof of uh, this lemma for the next video.